2000. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the August 2022 uh, Crozet Community Advisory Committee meeting. Um, my name is Joe Ford, the chair of this committee. I want to welcome everybody and thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, I want to note that this meeting is being held pursuant to and in compliance with emergency ordinance number 20-A16, emergency ordinance to ensure the continuity of government during the COVID-19 disaster. Um, and I believe that this will be our last meeting held pursuant to that emergency declaration. Carolyn? That is correct. I would like to say uh, goodbye. This is my last meeting with you all. I'm not leaving the county. I just won't be facilitating your meetings moving forward. You go back to being in person next month. And I've enjoyed working with you all for the past two years. So at the outset, if we could just all uh, thank Carolyn and, and uh, our, our hearty thanks for all of your work throughout this. I know it's been a lot of work to uh, help facilitate these meetings and be here for so much of them. So thank you, Carolyn, and uh, to everyone at the county for helping us make these virtual meetings possible. You're very um, welcome. Thank you. The, the committee members who are electronically present at this meeting are, uh, I will start and then we'll go around based on who I can see. Joe Four, uh, chair of the committee in the uh, Highlands area of Crozet. Uh, let's go, Michael. Uh, Michael Monaco, I'm the secretary of the committee and I uh, live in the Emerson Commons development by Star Hill. Costas? Costas Albertus, and I live out on 250. Jim? Hey, Jim Duncan, I live in Parkside Village. Uh, Mark? Mark McKenney in uh, West Hall. Ken. Hey, good evening. Ken Thacker. I live on St. George Avenue. Valerie. I am Valerie Long. I live in Old Trail. Mallory. Hey, Mallory DeCoster, Western Ridge. Thank you. And I believe we have Grace. Uh, Carol, I think Grace is in the, uh, I see her in the attendee, attendees. Uh, if you're able to move her in. She's there. Oh, wonderful. And Grace? Hi, um, I'm Grace um, Reamer, and I live on Lane Town Road. Wonderful. Thank you. We also have our uh, Board of Supervisors liaison, Anne. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, I was late. It rained, therefore it required rebooting all of the, the uh, routers and everything else and the computers here to get on. But I'm very glad to see you all today. And, oh, Carolyn, I see Ali uh, Pesh is in the attendees too. Hey, Ali, can you wrap up our introductions? Yes, sorry, I don't have, uh, I, can you guys hear me? I don't have internet um, tonight, yep. so I'm not gonna have my video on, but I'm Ali Pesh and I live near Min Springs. Thank you very much. And we're also joined uh, by our county staff representative. We have Rachel, uh, Rachel Falconstein from the county. Thank you so much, Rachel. Hi, everyone. All right, looking at our agenda. Let's see if I have it pulled up here. Uh, our first order of business is to approve the meeting minutes. I did get a notice from some folks. The only, um, the, the only suggestion or, or change that I heard to the minutes were some changes in the attendance. Um, I know that can always be tricky to nail down who was there. I tried to look through the video that was on YouTube, but unfortunately it doesn't have the grid view. It only has the individual one. So I wasn't able to just, Michael, I couldn't send you just a snapshot of who all was there from the video. Um, did anybody notice themselves were absent from the minutes who was actually in attendance? Just... All right, with Valerie. And I'm pretty sure Allie was at the meeting as well, and she was not listed as in attendance either. And there, I think there may have been some people who were listed as in attendance who were not. So maybe going back to the video and to the very beginning when everyone introduced themselves oh. might be one way to capture that. Yes, yeah, great point. Will do, yeah. Thank you, yes, I was there, but I clearly didn't look at the minutes closely. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah, I got another note uh, from Ken as well, um, with one or two updates to the minutes. Um, so thank you for that, Ken. All right, could you just Mike, could you just let us know what those what those updates were, and we can go ahead and hopefully approve those as edited. Oh yeah, there was a note about um, uh, what was it uh, from the community member who called in. Um, asking about a crosswalk at St. George and Crozet. Um, I had left out Crozet. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Any additional edits or comments on those changes? If not, we'll entertain a motion to approve those as amended and including the changes that Michael made to the uh, to the roster. Costas. Yeah, I'll make a motion. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Jim. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All in favor of approving the minutes as amended? Raise hands or aye. Uh, opposed? All right, seeing none, motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move into our main agenda item of the day, which is a presentation and discussion from our folks at the Downtown Crozet Initiative, our friends. Uh, I believe we have Frank, yep, it got moved over here into panelists and uh, Meg, there you are. I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. I'll turn it over to you guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, you're muted, Meg. I said, Frank, you're really the man. Thanks so much for having us. Um, I know all this has been long awaited. Um, and <clears throat> Frank is really the main attraction. You all want to hear a lot more from him than me. But um, I just wanted to let you know, because you haven't heard from us. I mean, it's been COVID. But just so you are aware, the DCI has been hard at work. And we have done a lot of things that that we're back room stuff, if you would, if you were to get prepared for what is coming forward in a feasibility study. Um, that's going to start happening and you can read about that. And we're going to have things on the website. So please tune into the website. Um, but we, as you all also would know, have waited for a lot of the approvals in the process to come through before anything could really happen. We always act as a resource for Frank. We are sort of the community eyes and ears. We try to solicit a lot of opinions when and where appropriate, but we think we're pretty, you know, most of us have been where you are and also are, you know, dedicated community members that want to preserve the best of Crozet and also take us into, you know, the future and make it an exciting and integrated place for all ages to enjoy and be a part of. So um, Frank's group, in, in my opinion, is really the group to do such a project. Frank, because um, we haven't seen you in a while, I'm going to back up a little bit. But Frank, <clears throat> to me, anyone who could stay the course as long as he has, we, we should all sort of bow down, bow down to because it's been a long process, certainly something the community has wanted. And I feel like Frank cares about it more than just a business proposition. Uh, because at this point, I think that business proposition, he could have probably found other ways to uh, pursue uh, more lucrative interim avenues, but he cares and he wants it to be, he has, I think, some ideas about how this could sort of be, uh, you know, wonderful small town feel, and this would be the heart of it. And I'm very excited. I, Frank, we've all helped certainly in being involved in sort of translating what we got from early sessions of the community. And we did, used to have monthly meetings with the community that were open to all people. Um, but with COVID, that all got shut down. But we've kept that feedback and we've translated that feedback and we've reached out when we need more feedback. And uh, Frank has always been all ears open. So without further ado, I am very excited to be a partner along with the county and Frank in this very, very exciting downtown project. And we we would like to say that we're the com community citizenry guiding print board. You know, we're a development, we're 501c3 development 
um, crew that's really trying to help make this an exciting, I, I think you're going to be really excited actually. And we have come a long way and now the, you're going to start seeing change. So Frank, you have all the exciting stuff. I wish I did, but off uh, on to you. Meg, uh, thank you. Can you all hear me? My internet's not great. So uh, hopefully I won't beam out here. Um, Joe, thank you for the invitation. Thanks to the members of the CCAC. We haven't been here in a while. And so I know there have been some changes. So those of you who I don't know, uh, would love to get to know you. Uh, those of you I do know, um, it's good to see you. Um, and again, appreciate the opportunity. Meg sort of overstates my role in this, uh, particularly as it relates to uh, a lot of what we'll talk about tonight, which is is the plaza and the things going in and around the plaza. Uh, the DCI has been an invaluable partner um, in this process. And as you know, the county is also a partner in this process, as is VDOT. <clears throat> and so uh, that could be why it's taken eight years to get here. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm happy to report uh, we had a meeting with the county uh, today and our engineers and the, uh, the revised 60% plans are going into VDOT uh, next week. Um, almost all the design issues have been resolved with VDOT. Um, so it, the expectation is that the review time will be relatively short. Um, and then VDOT will release the county because this will end up being a county project. They will release the county for the right of way acquisition phase and the utility relocation phase. And I'm going to share my screen tonight just so you can uh, get some sense of what, uh, what we've been doing. Um, and hopefully that'll work. So can everybody see this? Yeah, well, yes, yes. Um, so just to orient you, uh, the square is, is up here in the upper left corner. Uh, this is Library Avenue here coming up, High Street and Parkside Village is on the far east side of this drawing. So these are the plans that will go to VDOT uh, again uh, next week. Uh, in addition to that, the utility plans and the WPO, the Water Protection Ordinance Plan, will go to the county. Um, and the the level of you know, the level of detail that's in these sixty percent plans is I don't know why they call them sixty percent plans because essentially they they are very close to being uh, complete uh, construction drawings. Nonetheless, VDOT has their <clears throat> their own protocol. So um, I can scroll to the right because uh, you can't see all of this. Actually, maybe I can reduce this a little bit. Oops. Um, so you can just barely see the end of it. I don't know. I got to get my... Um, the far right end of this is Parkside Village, and you can see the townhouses here, the uh, very top of the, uh, or up, up north side of the extension road here. Um, there has been, you, you wonder like, why has this taken eight years? Um, we have gone through uh, countless meetings with, uh, VDOT, the county, the utility providers. Uh, we lost about six months earlier this year uh, with the utility relocation because we got pricing back from Dominion to move uh, 900 feet of overhead power line and their initial estimate was like uh, $1.2 million. So uh, together with the county, we have uh, we've managed to whittle that number down to something that's still outrageous, but um, will hopefully fit within the updated budget. Uh, as you may 
or may not know earlier this year, uh, the county uh, board of supervisors did vote to allocate additional funding to the project because it's taken so long. The original cost estimates that went to VDOT um, have obviously uh, gone up um, given where the rest of the world has gone. And so um, additional funds have been allocated to cover those costs. And uh, I wanna thank Ann Malik um, and the rest of the board members for uh, just kind of hanging in there and supporting the project. Um, it, it, this really is a, a public private partnership in the truest sense of the word. And we couldn't, certainly couldn't do it without uh, participation of the county and we really couldn't do it without the participation of the Crozet residents and, and the DCI uh, who have been so invaluable in making sure that the project, uh, when it's finished, that the pro project reflects the desires uh, of the community and that there's a real sense of community ownership uh, of this space because it, it will be uh, Crozet's downtown or you know, sort of town center. So um, before I move on, I, I'll, I'll just stop briefly. I'm, I'm not gonna go through all the drawings uh, because I'm sure nobody cares um, about all the details. I, I will share with you that the, you can see this path at the lower end of the uh, drawing here, the south side of the drawing. That is a, uh, a, a primarily a bike path, but it would be a bike ped, uh, pedestrian path um, a, as well that will connect to Parkside Village. Um, and the decision was made, for those of you who weren't around, uh, it's been a couple of years ago, decision was made to do a separate bike path as opposed to bike lanes in the street, um, just safer, more enjoyable. And Ultimately, when phase two of this project gets built and the secondary street gets built, uh, portions of this path will need to be modified. But uh, it'll be a great way to get from Parkside Village and communities uh, to the east of there uh, to downtown. And based on the good news we got uh, yesterday, maybe we'll uh, have a path that connects to Charlottesville before too long. Um, anyway, I'll stop here and just uh, take questions before we move on. Anybody? Sorry, Frank, specifically questions about sort of roads and... and yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of the road network, high level. Um, sure, Sandy? Yeah, I was just curious about that last remark you made. Um, who is the point person with the city of Charlottesville and how soon might, might those conversations uh, shift into high gear? Well, I just know what I read in the news yesterday, which has gone out, which is that I think the state um, through some participation of our, our senators has procured $2 million of funding for um, the planning of a, uh, a all purpose a uh, pathway that would go, I think, from Charlottesville all the way to uh, Afton Mountain, maybe further. Uh, and you probably know more of the details, but <clears throat> and this is this is for the planning phase. And I think the original desire from county staff was to start from do the section from Crozet to the tunnel first, because that was a more easily doable chunk. Uh -huh. And then we work our way east. Uh, but the grand majority of the uh, trail will be in the county. So, so it is county this work that's going on. Year, years and years away, would you guess? Well, we've got to start and we've got a lot of zeros to get us there. So that's really great news. Thank you for asking. Sure, thanks. All right, any questions at this point about the road network? Um, and well, actually, Frank, I was going to ask, I, is this, this is all going on in conjunction with the square renovation? Is That's that right? correct? And, and so this, is this all gonna be done kind of at the same time, all this work is gonna be line up? Ideally, it'll all be done at the same time. And, okay. and the timing uh, for submittal to VDOT looks like it's gonna work out such that uh, the two projects will go into VDOT at, uh, within a week of each other. Okay. Which is great. Great, great. thank you. 
Sure. All right, I think we can go ahead and, and move on to whatever else you have, Frank. Okay. I am going to take you now to the plaza, um, which is a project really that the, the DCI has been spearheading for the last uh, two and a half years. Um, as again, those of you who were around, uh, I need to get my sizing straight here. Um, Oh, how do I get this window to, there we go. Sorry, I'm just trying to read. Can everybody, can everybody see this? We're still on the roads, yep. Oh, you are? Yeah. Uh, hmm. on the roads. Okay, let me get rid of that. I'm kind of frozen on that. Yeah, let me. Uh, I got my. I've got an internet problem, so it's. While we're waiting on Frank, and I haven't met a lot of you either, but just to give you a little history about this designated bike path. Uh, this was an example of how we as a community stepped into high gear. And when we learned that there was going to be the bike path along the road that would be driven through downtown, it was very alarming because the width of the road, I mean, there's some roads which will go nameless that have been built in this in Crozet of late that I think are too wide to be really safe for kids. And so it was it was unanimous and we DCI unanimously voted. So I quickly went to the meeting at the county. The county said, let's put it out to the broader community. We came to the CCAC. It was unanimous at the CCAC that it'd be a designated path because more people probably are going to be more comfortable using it and accessing it. And you know, it'll feel more inviting to get them to the square than, and if a biker wants to ride down the main road, they can, right? And those people do it all the time on these back roads, which I just am terrified as I drive my horse trailer. <laughs> but anyway, um, but I, now we've got the screen up, but I just wanted to let you know, that's a way in which we have tried to keep that input going. But some of you may not have been around at the time, but that decision came up. Frank, I did have one one other question. You mentioned the back and forth with VDOT, and my recollection is that one of those sticking points was about VDOT wanting to make that that thoroughfare to be a higher speed and more of a of a, a high speed. And have you guys resolved that? Is it going to be a lower speed kind of more of a a, a city center kind of a road? It, it that's our expectation at this point. So unless VDOT changes their tune, I th I think they're on board for that. Um, I mean, we had literally had a fight at, at every turn with VDOT over the width of the road, over the intersections, over the radius of the corners on the intersections, over the size of the roundabouts, you name it. <laughs> um, and, and Frank, did I see on the, I don't, I don't mean to make you jump back and forth with the, with the images, um, but looking, thinking back to that picture you had of the, the streets, the northeastern roundabout that was on that um, image, did that have a northern, a, an opening on the north that would potentially allow for a, a railroad grade crossing yeah. at some point? Yes, that's the idea. That that uh, roundabout is in a location that, that could potentially connect to an underpass um, under the railroad there over to 240. Okay. And we, we had, a number of years ago actually did some research to figure out what the feasibility was. And we met with the railroad and uh, they surprisingly were very supportive. They were not supportive of an at-grade intersection closer to town, but they were very supportive of the underpass and said they would shut down the railroad if we needed, uh, you know, long enough to get that built. Um, so I would say that's, you know, that is a kind of a secondary priority at this point, but. Yeah, okay. That's the intent. Okay. Where, and so where is, where is that roughly, I'm trying to orient where roughly that is on the project kind of landmark wise. Um, 
you know where that would be about or where that theoretical crossing would be about? Uh, so actually, let me just pull it back up if I can do it without. No. Um, hold on. Let's see if I can get back to it. Isn't it right? Just so we don't have to lose this, isn't it also like right by the Crozet Great Value? Here we it's go. Us. Can you guys see this? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, unfortunately, you you can't see it, but so the underpass would go in this location here, and you come out right at the fire station. Fire station. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Frank. No problem. We're good. Okay. Can everybody see this? Uh, so this, uh, again, for those of you who've been around for a while, there have been several design iterations. Uh, we hired uh, Mahan Reichel, a firm out of Baltimore, uh, back in 2016. Uh, they came up with a number of different schemes. Um, out of that, we, we, we ended up with, uh, surprisingly, a design that wasn't from MRA. Um, it was from a local landscape architect uh, who, who lives in uh, Crozet and whom many of you uh, probably know. Um, and subsequent to that, uh, the, the DCI uh, really took the plans and dug into them in a deep way. Um, and they developed an entire sort of uh, plan review protocol, um, talking about each feature, the things that were important to the community, et cetera, et cetera. And from that, and, and anybody from the DCI who's here, Meg, if you want to expound on that, you can. But uh, from that, MRI went back and, and modified the design. And so this is, this is the most recent design uh, that was completed late last year. And, and which the DCI is currently working with. And uh, while there are a number of features that are in here, um, it doesn't necessarily mean the final plans will include every feature. I think part of what the DCI is doing now through their feasibility study is determining, you know, kind of a list of the most important priorities or a, a ranking of priorities and the county has some concerns over liability associated uh, with something like a fire pit. So the fire pit may have to move to a different location. Uh, but, the, but the general layout, um, I think most everybody seems pretty comfortable with. Um, and so I, I'm, I won't go through it in uh, great detail. You can see the numbered items on the right side of your screen. Those are all the sort of potential um, features in the plaza. Um, the final materials have not been selected. Uh, so that there's, still, there's still room for more public input. Um, they're, they're, I think the DCI's intent is to raise money for some of the features in the plaza. So there, there may be naming opportunities in the plaza. Uh, for some of those features that aren't part of the base construction budget, which uh, will cover everything but the, the furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Yeah, can I interject here just yeah. briefly on, the, on, that, on that note? I mean, just in terms of gathering feedback and information, we did do a lot of different forums for it. It does seem like they were forever ago. I can't even believe it was so long ago that we hired Mahan Reichel, but this definitely was born out of sessions held in Crozet Elementary School to Piedmont Place to lots of community engagement. Um, and in the end, it was a public-private partnership. So it's between the county, Frank, and DCI. So in, you know, definitely DCI, we have committed to a $1.2 million contribution in furnishings and fixtures. Um, so that after our feasibility study, when we sort of test the waters and make sure everybody likes the features or some will probably step forward and say that they themselves want to have an in, some input on a specific feature that they want to name. Um, but, but there will be, you know, anything from, you know, a wall or bricks, somewhat like the library project. Um, but we're really hoping that it will be 
something the whole community will participate in in one way or the other. So that's that's all. Any other questions before I leave this screen? Sandy? How did you come up with these elements? Was this just like a brainstorming session within your group or was there a, a charrette? I don't, I don't remember, but maybe that's what we did. Yeah, so this, this uh, started with a, a public engagement session and I wanna say it was in 2006, late 2016, 2017, I, I've lost track. Um, where MRA came down, um, they showed a bunch of stuff to the community. Uh, there was a really good turnout um, at Piedmont Place. And a lot of feedback was sort of collected uh, during that meeting. Then MRA went back and uh, sort of modified their design per the feedback they had gotten uh, about things that were important uh, to, you know, to folks in the community. And so there's kind of a, you know, as I said earlier, I don't know that every feature will end up being here, but I think they wanted to capture all the features that uh, seem to be most desirable to the, the community through the feedback sessions that they got uh, at that time, as well as feedback sessions uh, through the DCI subsequent to that. Okay, thanks. Uh, sure. um, Karen, it looks like we have a comment. Um, uh, Clover, Carol, and the attendees, could, could we open it up so she can uh, ask her comment? Yes. Hi, Clover. I have two. Hi, I'm Clover. I, I live on St. George near downtown, and um, I have two questions. One is what kinds of businesses do you envision for the mixed use? commercial building and secondly do you have a commitment for a hotel those are my two questions okay uh, to your first question we're actually going to look at the commercial mixed use building in a little more detail after we uh, finish with the plaza so you can see what's in that building and what kinds of spaces and at that point i can talk about the the types of uses we envision in that building um with regard to the hotel, we do have a commitment from one hotel developer. Uh, we have interest from another hotel developer, uh, two different concepts um, that I think would could complement each other very well. Um, one is a very small boutique uh, concept. The other one is um, a more of a self-service kind of hotel concepts, a little more, uh, I don't want to say budget oriented, but um, more of a condo hotel. Um, so those conversations uh, have been going on for the last couple of years. And, you know, unfortunately, because the timing of final approvals and construction has been so uncertain, it's very difficult to, um, it, it's very difficult to make commitments to anybody. <laughs> um, I think we're finally getting to the point where we have a pretty good sense of what the schedule is and there aren't a lot of obstacles left. Um, so we're, I'm feeling more and more comfortable about making commitments, but um, the short answer is yes, we do, we do have a, a commitment for one hotel and, and discussions about a second. One thing I will note um, that I should have noted in the uh, discussion over the roadway is it, it, it does require right away primarily from um, my group, uh, and, but there are some uh, property owners that are not part of our group that are in the path of uh, either the Library Avenue extension or the uh, roundabout at, at High Street. Um, for the most part, we've gotten cooperation from those property owners. Uh, we have agreements with two of them. We have one property owner who has not agreed uh, to, uh, to sell right away because they would be compensated. Um, but I'm hopeful that that, that will get resolved. Uh, it's a very small section of uh, real estate kind of in this roundabout. 
Um, so I'm going to scroll forward a little Sorry. bit. Um, right. uh, Mark, yeah. you, had a, you had a question on, on this oh. before we head out? Yeah. Hey, um, thanks, Frank. This is really great. Just a question on uh, the building that the bike shop is in. Um, yes. You know, kind of what, what does this mean um, for, for that business? Um, I think, you know, one thing we try to do is not drive businesses out and figure out a way to help support them and keep them. And I know that bike shop is real vital uh, to our community. Yeah, so the bike shop currently leases space from us um, in that house that uh, you all know of. Um, uh, we are very anxious to keep the bike shop downtown. And so I've, I've been in conversations um, with them over the last couple of years and, and, and just exploring short-term options while this construction is going on and then longer term options uh, for them to locate potentially where they could connect to the bike path, which would really be ideal. Um, we don't have anything concrete at this point. Um, I, think there, I think there will be an opportunity, hopefully to, you know, to, to keep them on site. Uh, and if not on site, certainly downtown, uh, because I, they are a great community asset. But they, they sorry, Frank, the they will they would be displaced by this phase one in the plot is that right the they, they will be yes their their building is currently kind of uh right in the plaza <coughs> at the west side of the plaza it's kind of it's kind of in the plaza actually <clears throat> mallory hey thank you um i was wondering if uh parking is planned for i see there's you know some room for some street parking here uh, but will, will there be plenty of parking to access this? Yeah, area? great question. Um, so there is a lot of on-street parking. Um, there will be a, a, a lot of uh, temporary parking um, during phase one construction and upon completion of phase one. There's a lot of surface parking contemplated actually in phase two next to the railroad tracks. So the short term answer is, yeah, there'll be plenty of parking um, as phase two and three get built out. There will be the need for parking salute long term parking solutions. And so the county has um, hired a consultant who did a parking study, um, Kimley Horn, and they had some specific recommendations. There's a lot of underutilized parking in Crozet now. And so they had some thoughts about how that could be better utilized. Uh, more shared parking, um, but ultimately at some point, uh, the expectation is that either some structured parking will be needed um, or, you know, who knows at that point, we, we had conversations with Perone about uh, these sort of driverless shuttles and could you have parking lots that were outside of downtown with, with you know, driverless shuttles going back and forth. And, I don't know where that ends up, but um, uh, to answer your question in the short run, for the five to eight year horizon, uh, there'll be plenty of parking. Okay, and it'll be street parking, no no parking lot initially. No, there'll be parking lots um, in, in this block that uh, you can't see at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, okay. There will be parking lots there and there'll be surface parking lots over next to the railroad track. Okay quite a bit of parking over there. Yeah, I just want to flag for everybody. Frank was very helpfully noted that parking study that's actually included as an, in part of the appendix to the uh, master plan. So if anybody wants to go find that, the Crozet master plan actually includes that parking study um, as an appendix. You can go check that out. Perfect. So I'm going to scroll through these next slides pretty quickly. Uh, all these do is kind of show you the different ways that the, the plaza could be utilized. Um, in this case, for a festival or a, a city market or uh, something like that. They sort of looked at, you know, what the, what the capacity of the plaza could be uh, during different types of events. And so uh, a lot of more technical drawings are just about how the grades work. It's a very relatively flat site, as you can see here. Um, and uh, let's see, general usage. 
Um, and then it kind of delves into some of these features and what the features could look and feel like. And I believe this presentation is available on the DCI website. Uh, Meg, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so you can go back if you want to look at this in more detail. Uh, there are lots of cool ideas here uh, that MRA has included in photographic uh, fashion to just show, you know, what some of these features might look and feel like. As I scroll through, if anybody has a question, just, you know, jump in. Uh, this promenade, just uh, so you understand, is about 20 feet wide, 20, 22 feet wide. Um, in this scheme, it shows these sort of movable benches here, which are kind of capitalize on the, the, the railroad theme. Uh, they would operate on rails um, and could be moved at times. And then you have, we'll have a lighted promenade here uh, with outdoor dining, uh, retail storefronts um, on the plaza. To what extent, I, maybe it's too early to say, but to what extent are you including green features in all this design? I, you know, when I heard fire pit, I thought, oh, can we right. do that? <laughs> <laughs> but but on that, um, it seems like there is going to be a fair amount of paving going on. And so I'm just wondering what else you're doing in the vein of renewable energy, for example. Yeah, so we've uh, one of the members of the DCI is very in, engaged. In, I don't know if you know Dave Stoner, but he's he's kind of in the solar energy business. And so um, we've had numerous conversations about kind of how we could make downtown more self-sufficient from an energy perspective uh, and have gone as far as looking at uh, off-site opportunities for uh, solar banks that could then help subsidize power costs downtown. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Dominion is not particularly friendly to work with in that regard. Um, we've certainly looked at uh, solar rooftops, which are, you know, that's, um, that's pretty easy, um, low hanging fruit. Uh, we looked at, we looked at solar panels above parking areas, for example. Um, but they are unfortunately not very cost effective, uh, for the amount of power you get back it, uh, the costs are pretty high. Um, Dave would probably be the best guy. And I don't know if he's on this uh, sort of attending tonight, but if he is, maybe he could jump in. Um, I think we, we still love the idea of, you know, as, as, as much sustainability from an energy perspective and also just from a stormwater perspective. So um, we're exploring those opportunities. Some of those are limited because again, you're dealing with VDOT on the, on the stormwater if it's coming off the street. Um, I will note one other thing from a, I'm gonna actually go back, sorry. Um, one other design feature that we have had to compromise on. Excuse me, Frank, I did yeah. move uh, Dan over. David? David, sorry. Dave? Okay, yeah. great. Uh, so Dave, I don't know if you wanna to add to that, um, anything I said or, or correct anything I said, but please feel free to jump in. I noticed that that company Unilock, which does permeable pavement, is now locating a large facility near Richmond. And uh, maybe with some of this paving, that's something you might want to look at. Well, so let me touch on the on the paving for a minute. So in the original plan, the area around the plaza, uh, so all the streets around the plaza were actually in pavers, not in pavement, as in asphalt. Um, this has long been an issue with VDOT. They don't like it. They won't maintain it. Uh, the county was going to be uh, forced to maintain it or the essentially the property owners around the plaza would be forced to maintain the pavers. VDOT refused any sort of permeable paver uh, option there, which would have been very progressive, um, but again, involved costs that they were not willing to absorb and the county wasn't really in a position to take on that kind of responsibility. So after uh, 
lots of gnashing of teeth, uh, we finally agreed to a compromise solution, which is that the these crosswalks uh, will all be pavers, sure. uh, but the streets themselves will be asphalt. Yeah, and I was thinking more of the pedestrian areas that you're designing now, the sort of recreational areas and yeah, and I don't know. It's conceivable those could be permeable pavers. Although again, the permeable pavers only work when the when somebody keeps them clean, and when those pores get clogged up, if you don't have a way, you know, if somebody's not maintaining them actively, they become pretty ineffective. And so then you have to have backup systems that, that um, control that um, or compensate for that. I should say. All right. But Frank, if I'm not mistaken, there's going to be a lot of, um, uh, what is it called? Stone dust also. So that's not all. No, not that's all right. Made. Yeah. So all, all these areas in green, those are all permeable. Um, would involve stone dust. And uh, one of the ideas that uh, MRA came up with that we thought was pretty neat was to actually take some of the scraps from the, 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 the demolition of Barnes Lumber. We will have a number of concrete slabs uh, that um, can be broken up and actually configured artistically into different shapes. And those can be used in conjunction with stone dust in some of these uh, areas where you see all the trees. Kind of a neat idea and they, they should, uh, I don't know if they have a photo in here, but I'll show you. They did something similar up at the Naval Yards uh, and it's very attractive. Uh, so I'll scroll back down and see if we have a, so here's the sort of movable bench idea. Um, now they didn't include a photo of the, of the naval yards. God, I was sure they had one in here. Oh, there it is, right here. I don't know if you all can see that where my cursor is, but. I see the, um, Carolyn did move uh, Dave Stoner. I don't know, Dave, uh, if you had any thoughts on the, the sustainability. And then after Dave, uh, maybe we can go to Ann. Ann uh, had a question for you. Um, thanks. Thanks, Joe. Um, no, I think Frank covered it pretty well, at least from the energy side. Um, I've been looking at it with him. You know, clearly the this what's logical is doing rooftop solar on a number of the buildings, and I think Frank will be looking to looking at that as building design progresses. Um, you know, trying to do more on-site ground map is difficult. Just there's really not much room. Um, on that site, as you build out roads to the county, and um, you know, I would love to think that there could be a small community solar project in Crozet Future somewhere off-site, but um, you know that's a much longer discussion, uh, um, and, there's, and there's all kinds of issues with potentially being able to do that. Um, and I think the only other thing I'd say from the green side of things, I know, you know, stormwater and stormwater management will be a huge issue for the site. And I'm sure Frank and, and his design team will be in, including, you know, a number of rain gardens and infrastructure. Nope. Nope, we lost you, Dave. We lost Dave. Uh, Ann, please. Oh, you're muted. Great, thank you. You had mentioned the promenade area, which I assume is the Oak Street connection. That is, uh, is that right? Yeah. Well, there are two. There are really two. So you, the pro, there's a there's a north south promenade, which uh, you can see here. If you can see my yeah. cursor, that that kind of runs in front of the buildings on the plaza. So between the the buildings and the and the rest of the plaza. Um, and that's the, that and the area between the two buildings, between the hotel and the mixed use building. Okay. That area is envisioned as a promenade as well. And there are a number of sort of, um, oh, they're, they're sort of micro retail spaces along the, the promenade that goes back to Oak Street. 
Um, oh. The idea being you kind of small artists uh, who effectively rent, you know, 100 square feet. Um, uh, and they would have a little shop on that promenade area or a small sandwich shop or, you know, whatever it is. Thank you. Sure. So uh, um, uh, I'm going to stop here briefly and then I'm going to transition to some building drawings uh, for folks to see. Um, this last slide is really about how you sort of integrate um, art into or how you, you might integrate art into the plaza. And art sort of became a major theme as people began thinking about you know what what Crozet's identity is um, art is is very much a part of that there is a an enormous arts community in Crozet relative to its size uh, covering everything from the performing arts to visual arts um, they're just a, there are a lot of people uh, who care about art um, and it's and it's part of has become part of Crozet's identity just through the Crozet Arts and Crafts Festival so it was really important uh, to them and to us that we find opportunities to, to, to showcase um, Crozet's art and the artists who are there. And so uh, the plaza is part of, it's part of that effort uh, or, or a venue for uh, some of that to be displayed. Uh, the rest of it, or... Um, I'm going to show you the building that we just looked at, this mixed-use commercial building here. Um, we have some drawings of, so you can see uh, these drawings were done by Mitchell Matthews. And I'll show you different perspectives of the building. I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the, the details of the architecture. I think the fundamental challenge was to try to break the building up so that from a scale perspective, it feels uh, much more organic. Uh, so this is actually the Oak Street um, facade that you're looking at here. So you're looking into the, the plaza itself. Um, this over on the very left side of this is the extension of the square. So you're kind of at the corner just uh, up from uh, the, the drugstore or the pharmacy there, you're at that corner. Um, as you go down, this is an elevation of the plaza side itself. And this big section that you're looking at here, the upper floors of this um, are, are, we hope, will be a downtown uh, Crozet Art Center for both performing and visual arts. And we've had numerous meetings with the arts community, a representative of the arts community. Um, this is envisioned at the lower level to be a restaurant. Um, and then there's kind of a rooftop uh, a terrace up here that could be an event space, uh, et cetera. And the, the, the performing arts space would also be event space. Um, we, th we thought it was really important for uh, the Crozet Arts community to be represented downtown and, and for there to be an attraction downtown uh, that would bring people downtown to see performances uh, or, or art shows, et cetera. So that's kind of what's, uh, you know, on the table now. Obviously, the ability to make that happen will depend on uh, the arts community in part their ability to, to rally the forces and to figure out exactly what they want and need. Uh, we've sort of set space aside in the building for them, um, but the actual programming of that has, has yet to be agreed on. Uh, the rest of this building you can see is a combination of retail and then and most likely office above. Uh, I'll back up quickly and show you some floor plans. If they, uh, so let's go to the first floor. Uh, okay. So um, you can kind of see how this building fits together. Uh, it's pr pretty ingenious. What uh, Mitchell Matthews is a local design firm uh, came up with. 
And so it's really, this is actually four buildings that, that they kind of put together in a way that allows us to be more efficient with the, the common areas. Um, so that you don't have to have an elevator in every single one of these buildings. Uh, so there's sort of common uh, emergency access, uh, common bathrooms, common elevator, and then these sort of spaces that both from the outside and the inside would, would feel uh, very much independent. Um, and that would include this, uh, the arts gallery, these sort of market stalls that, that would front along the promenade uh, going up to the plaza, and then a series of spaces on the ground level that would be retail and or other, you know, sort of small restaurants. These spaces can be combined um, if necessary, if somebody needs more than the minimum square footage. And then as you move up, uh, we have office space on the second level, uh, and then this, uh, Crozet art space, uh, performing art space. And then the same thing on the third floor, more performing arts, um, office, rehearsal, whatever they end up wanting or needing exactly. And then uh, additional office space um, could be residential, but I think it's probably more likely that it, it'll end up being office. So I just, I wanted to share that just because I think it's, um, it gives you one more level of understanding of kind of what we're trying to create and welcome feedback, uh, both on the planning and the, and the architecture. Uh, it's a little bit hard to read um, on the architecture, for example, you know, it's, you can look at this, but you don't really know, like, what are the materials? I think uh, in Mitchell Matthews' mind, these these materials kind of fit really well into Crozet because they mimic uh, materials that already exist um, in and around downtown and a lot of wood. Uh, this gray area is, is actually more like uh, Corten steel or corrugated um, steel uh, and then sort of uh, brick, a little more industrial feeling. So again, an effort to try to capture you know, what's unique about Crozet and not try to make it something that it's not. Mark? Thanks, Joe. Um, Mr. Stoner, can you go back to the uh, first floor map? Sure. Um, I think my, I got two questions. Um, the first one, um, much like the bike shop, so um, this is no impact to far downers, Crozet hardware, those buildings there. This is all kind of the, um, what would it be? The east east side of the buildings and forward. Yeah, so the far downers would be uh, uh, to the top of the screen across Oak Street. That the, yeah. the pharmacy and all that is on the other side of the street. Okay. Um, I think my other question, uh, maybe for Ms. Malik. Um, so would the county take responsibility on the sanitation, the public restrooms, the trash cans, the any littering? You know, who's who's ultimately responsible for keeping the area clean and public restrooms actually able to be used? Yeah, so I can actually speak to that and then Dave and, and Ann can chime in. Uh, as you can see here, we have proposed public restrooms. Uh, that was an, uh, part of a negotiation with the county because the county very much wanted public restrooms. Um, they are currently uh, and have been for the last few months working with the DCI to establish uh, an operating agreement effectively for the plaza. Um, and, and Dave were uh and you guys could speak to that in more detail but um the, i think there is a there is a concept a conceptual plan in place and i think they're working through the details now. yeah and, and i can i can add to that um the of course the plaza will be a county owned asset the plaza will the county will ultimately own the plaza but um the dci's tabled uh proposal to um, the county that's currently being discussed, whereby we and the county together would um, be responsible for operation and maintenance. Um, clearly, I think the DCI 
is keen to be involved and drive um, programming of the plaza, community events, those kind of things. When it comes to actually maintenance of the hardscape, um, we haven't yet worked out the details of, well, is that going to primarily be a county driven um, um, activity? Is that something maybe the county would provide funding and the DCI would manage? Um, but those discussions are ongoing. Thank you. All I have to say is that the county does through FES, which is Facilities and Environmental Services, uh, take care of the extra wide sidewalks along Crozet Avenue and the streetscape in front of the library, because those are beyond the specs that VDOT would accept. And we are very slowly at the county developing a public works department, which we've never had before. But as the folks in the urban ring around Charlottesville are, are continually confronted with sidewalks with grass growing up through the middle and no responsibility being taken. Uh, this is the future that we see. And uh, I know that the DCI will have a very important role in, in the programming and uh, I'm thrilled with the, the fundraising that they have proposed. So we will get these uh, maintenance things worked out. I don't have any extra information to do that, to contribute right now, but uh, I know there's sort of the first year program and then there's after the first year that we want to see what happens. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, the commercial uh, components of this plan look very nice, but I'm wondering how much our population needs to grow to support the additional stores, restaurants, hotel and art center. I mean, are we there yet or how many more people need to live in Crozet before planners would confirm that there are enough people to, to uh, make these ventures a go? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, the, the county actually did uh, hire a consulting firm to do a market study. Um, and there are some serious gaps uh, in Crozet, as, you, as, as those of you who live there probably know. Um, uh, just things that you would expect in a community that size. And if, if, you, if you go to other communities that are uh, roughly Crozet's size and Crozet is getting close to 10,000 residents and will be at 15,000 residents, uh, you know, I don't know, perhaps within five years, um, you find out that they actually have real downtowns. And um, while, you know, not all those communities are thriving uh, a community with the kind of uh, disposable income that Crozet has, um, the consultant felt yeah could definitely support uh, the the amount of additional development that we're proposing. Having said that, um, I I think it's it is really important to point out that the success of downtown will will ultimately depend on the Crozet residents. Um, and the Crozet, this plaza, which I think will be spectacular, uh, will be a natural attraction. But as I have said to my team over and over again, it doesn't matter how nice it is. If it's not programmed effectively, um, it's not going to be successful. And so I think the DCI's role is so important and the community's role is so important in making sure that this, this space is vibrant and active. Um, and I, uh, this is not a good uh, comparable, but if those of you are familiar with uh, Ix Park downtown, it's not even a nice space. I mean, there's nothing particularly uh, from, from an architectural or planning perspective, uh, there's nothing about it that's particularly nice, um, but they do a really good job programming. And it has a really unique, you know, sort of unique vibe about it. And so I, that's, that's what we're committed to, to creating here. Uh, but that'll, that, that takes, I can't do that as a developer. That requires, you know, the DCI and it requires the active involvement of the community and the, the arts community and, you know, people being willing to open stores downtown. And we've talked to a lot of retailers that have an interest, um, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's, we, we won't know until, uh, until we get a firm schedule and 
so we can tell somebody, yeah, uh, your space will be ready by X date. Uh, Anne and then Meg. I was just going to rem remind people that Crozet is the Mecca for people from Southern Batesville to Sugar Hollow and all the way to Free Union. And when the planning was being done for the library, there was a 35 square mile area that was considered the draw for, for that place. Uh, and I'm hopeful that that same geography will matter for this as well. And also, since um, as just as a follow up to that, you know, one of the big things that we've heard, and I'm sure you as CCAC know better than anybody, you know, job creation, needing more opportunities. We are like the agritourism business is alive and well, and it is you know thriving in this area. So even if you're worried about the local population, which I am not. Um, but if there is a concern on that front, look at, you know, go to King Family Vineyard on a Wednesday night and look at the fall and the leaf peepers. I mean, we, we need hotels. We need places for people to stay. We need restaurants for them to eat and we need infrastructure, the little boutiques to show off the things made by local artisans or whatever that might be, local wines, local beers. So I do believe that it's we're behind, actually. I think we would have been thriving if this had been built even five years ago. But, but I think we will fill it very easily. And hopefully the community, as Frank has said, and Anne has echoed, will help to make that dream a reality because it'll mean more jobs and more people can stay here. Have Maybe they have more mom and pop run their own business sorts of things out this way and they will be supported by locals as well as our tourists. Valerie. Thank you, Frank. This is so exciting. You've done such a nice job with this and I'm I'm really excited for it to materialize. And so forgive me if you said this already, but did you mention when you hope to break ground now that you are past some of those big hurdles you referenced? Just ballpark realizing yeah. that's incredibly difficult to actually predict, but yeah, I, I, I don't think I did, Valerie, so thanks for reminding me, and I, this, this schedule changes practically weekly, but um, I think the, the trigger for a firm schedule has been the resubmittal of these plans to VDOT. Uh, assuming that goes in next week, we are targeting construction for both the, the square and this uh, uh, VDOT road extension, uh, all the road infrastructure I showed you. Um, early summer of 2023. Um, I, I, I'd love to say it'll be May, but um, the reality is it could be June, July, or August. Um, we'll just have to see how long it takes VDOT to process these plans. But the hurdles, all the major hurdles have been cleared at the county. They've been cleared with the, the Army Corps of Engineers. They've been cleared um, you know, with the other, the, the utility providers, we, we've checked a lot of boxes at this point. Um, that doesn't mean we won't get held up again, <laughs> as, as you better than anyone probably knows, uh, that nothing's predictable in our business, but um, that's the, that's the goal at this point would be to break ground uh, May, June of next year. Great. That's wonderful. And you have site plan approval as well, in addition to the or is that come, would that come after? Well, the plan approval, yeah, will come with the submittal that goes in this, uh, the, the things needed for a site plan approval uh, will, will go in first uh, next week. And that's really more about the road. So site plan approval for the plaza, for example, uh, won't go in until this fall because it's not really in the critical path. Right. The road construction, it'll take six or seven months of road construction before they can even start the plaza or we can start any buildings. So uh, important point to, uh, to make here, the road construction starts June, July of next year, if everything goes well. Uh, building construction is probably six months behind that. Thank you. That's very exciting. Hope it goes well. Thank you. Mark? Um, yeah, and just uh, to echo Valerie, I mean, this is great. This is actually one of the reasons my wife and I moved our family out to Crozet was seeing 
the future of Crozet and, and the downtown piece. So I'm, I'm excited. Um, so goals to break ground, obviously, as you said, how long do you think phase one is going to take? Yeah, so phase one, which includes, by the way, this uh, space on the west side of the plaza, and it includes the, the areas in what we call block three, which is the east side of the plaza. And there's some space on the north side of the plaza uh, that we also own. All those are considered part of phase one. There's another portion of phase one, which we don't own, and that's the property across the street, across Library Avenue. It's mm -hmm. owned by Ross Stevens and, and the church. Um, we don't really have any control over that. So we can't, I, I, I can't really uh, predict what might happen there or when it might happen. Uh, but the, our phase one, uh, we are thinking is probably a three to four year construction uh, project. Um, we have two buildings already designed or partially designed on the east side of the plaza. And the goal is to obviously get as many buildings around the plaza as possible, as quickly as possible, because that's how you really create a sense of place. Um, the, the plaza will feel great uh, even without the buildings, but it'll feel much more uh, like a real place once the buildings surround it. And once, once you break ground on the topic of the hotel, that's when you would be able to kind of more solidify the hotel aspect to this plan? Yes. So once, yeah, once we know when a hotel could potentially break ground, when it would be available, that, you know, we, we can work backwards from there. Uh, that's coming quickly. So I, 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 uh, I had a meeting last week um, with one of the hotel build developers um, and they are they understand that they're going to need to develop a site plan um, really in the next three to four months so it's all this is kind of piling up on itself um, and again it, it um, it's a shame it's taken so long to get to a point where there was enough certainty where we could really have those conversations, but that's just, you know, that's the way it is. Yeah, no, thank you. And, and thanks for all your hard work in the DCI teams keeping this going. Any other questions uh, about this uh, building plan? Any other uh, levels you wanna go to or information you? you guys feel like you need. And again, feel free to email me or email the, the DCI if you have comments, uh, if you're interested, you know, again, particularly on the, on the plaza side or the, or the art center, if you have any interest in that, in those areas, um, I would invite you to reach out to the, to the DCI um, and see how you could get involved. Uh, yeah, I guess on that last point, just one final question. Maybe this is for Meg. Um, on that point about the plaza, up front there was just such a, a you know there was so much great engagement with the community and and putting up the different you know scheme sch schematics and looking at things and getting feedback. Meg, in terms of the plaza, you know the plans have advanced so far along. Are what do you see for sort of further? Are there going to be further opportunities for public engagement now that we are getting down to some of the more granular things like Frank's talking about, about what is this surface or what is this thing going to be or where what is going to go in this splash pad? Uh, are there going to be opportunities for kind of the public to weigh in or, or is it really more kind of, you know, in, in your hands as a designer at this point? In point of fact, I would say that this is kind of in general an evolution from where we were and we really haven't been the sole contributors it's been sent out and about numerous times but that is in point of fact part of the feasibility study and also i know the county their liability issues and they're not keen for some of the features that the community really wanted mm -hmm. Um, we're going to keep them there for a while and see what we learn as we get out and about we want to talk, you know, to citizenry. I mean, if people want to be involved and, and, you know, certainly talk to us and have, you know, an interest in giving us feedback, we are 
totally open to that. We would welcome all the feedback we can get. And in fact, the feasibility study is our first step. We had our whole case statement. It's beautiful. I think the newest one, if it's not on our website now, it will be soon. But there's a lot of great information in there that tells you sort of how this process has worked. Um, but we're going to go out to key stakeholders, you know, people who like like businesses that have been around, you know, maybe people who've been here forever, people who've moved in, you know, newly to the community, people who are in neighboring communities to try to get a big swath of the population to sort of tell us their feedback on not the specifics of the plaza so much, but where they are most interested and do they and and is the interest there quite frankly i mean we need to make sure when we go out to raise this money that you know you all are sort of a test market and your enthusiasm is is fantastic frankly um and we hope everyone feels that way and then we can narrow it down as we go does that make sense yeah okay. so it sounds like the the feedback stage is more target at this point it's it's less kind of like design yeah. and concept and it's more targeted it sounds like you're talking about feasibility it sounds like it's going to be tied more to what people are going to be willing to support financially if i'm it sounds um like. not, not really i mean yes we hope they will want to do it but it's really really a feasibility study is is sort of testing the viability of the project like we don't want to go out and launch this campaign if the community sort of says, or the key stakeholders, and I don't mean key um, prospective investors, I mean, you know, the local businesses in and around that area who are impacted by that, how do they see it? Do they think it'll help their business or harm their business? You know, King Family Vineyard, I mean, my Lord, I mean, is, you know, they, they, I'm sure they are dying for a hotel to support their, you know, wedding and other type of entertainment businesses. So it's it's that kind of thing we want to learn about and make sure they feel that it will be supported in the way that we think it will be supported. It's just testing our theory. Yeah. But the design, there are tweaks that can be made, but but really it's it's been long, long time and coming yeah. in many iterations. And I think what you see is kind of where we want to keep it. It won't be okay. exactly like this, but yeah, that's, I just, yeah, that's no, that's helpful. I think that's what I was getting at is, is, you know, I think some people in the community might have been wondering, you know, are they, is there still going to be some big open house where it's like, come and put stickies on the things that you want? And it sounds like, no, we, we're pretty, we're pretty far down the road there. And that's yeah. not going to be happening yet. Okay. So that's helpful. Frank, any final, you know, thoughts or things you wanted to, to add? No, I think that I've covered everything I uh, wanted to cover and I, that I thought folks would be interested in. Um, so, and I've taken up a lot of your time. Um, so I appreciate everybody uh, kind of hanging in there with us. And I hope, uh, I hope people feel good about where we are. Uh, we're feeling pretty good about where we are. Um, sorry it's taken so long. Um, but, you know, in some respects, maybe it's a blessing. Uh, we were talking the other day, if all this had gone well, we probably would have been opening this commercial building right when the pandemic hit. So um, sometimes things work out for the best. Well, anyway, thank you. thank you. Yeah, thank you again for your time and thanks to the rest of the committee and uh, uh, look forward to seeing you again in the future as plans develop further. Excellent. Thank you, Frank, Meg, and Dave, and everyone else who joined us. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of the, our favorite topics and something that's really vital to our community. So thank you so much for joining. Um, we will move to our, the only other official agenda item that we had this evening was, um, you know, I, I was hoping to have, and, and I think it's a fairly brief conversation, but um, looking at the Crozet master plan, which is, of course, sort of our guiding document, I was trying to find ways or think of ways or or have us discuss some ways that this committee might be of help, right, to staff and to the county, right? We know that obviously with the comp plan um, going on, staff is incredibly busy. Um, they are engaged in a lot of things. They have a, a ton of work. And as I looked through the kind of the implementation of the master plan, I was wondering if there might be some opportunities for us to actually kind of maybe do some legwork or help out, um, knowing that we've got what, 15, 16 hardworking, smart, talented, committed people, um, you know, and coming through our own master plan process, right? You know, we were used to having sort of two a month, right? We were committed to doing multiple meetings per month and doing extra work kind of on the side. 
Um, and we know too that, that folks in this community have done previous things like the Crozet Community Survey um, from a few years back. So, you know, the, the community is capable of sort of pitching in and volunteering and doing some time. And so I, I was talking with Rachel, you know, an email earlier to look for some opportunities that we might be able to actually facilitate some of the work or maybe do some of the legwork to take some of it off of staff's plate and help move some of these projects forward. So when I was looking at the implementation section, some of the things that jumped out immediately um, were things like, you know, the naturally occurring affordable housing survey um, or the idea of the downtown neighborhood survey, the cultural resources and the building resources. I, I had I asked Rachel if there was a way that we could help out there. She also mentioned there's this um, implementation item on the same page of the land use guidelines about placemaking and a role for the CCAC specifically and other groups to do some placemaking in terms of art and other projects. And so um, I just wanted to kind of open this up and have a, a very short but maybe open in discussion about what role we might be able to play. Rachel, can you just maybe mention, because I, I had mentioned to you about the, the NOAA survey, the affordable housing, and the downtown neighborhood survey. You had mentioned that those aren't really on the plate right now in terms of work. Is that right? That's right. Our work program is set by the Board of Supervisors, and they have directed us to focus on the comp plan right now. So we're kind of all hands on deck on that project, um, but they look at it every year. So projects or new projects are added each year, and so um that's not to say it couldn't be added in a future year but right now that's not on deck for staff um, and i will say that's a study that needs to be done by a professional that's not to say there couldn't be community input but a professional architect or a historic preservation kind of firm needs to needs to support that study to to get the technical kind of analysis that is needed um, for those projects so there's there's no aspects of those surveys that could be done by you know just legwork people walking around and picking up some data. Uh, the the projects need to be scoped in more detail. We haven't done that work yet. There okay. certainly could be opportunities for community participation and input, um, but we haven't really enumerated what those are yet to scope the project to see what it would look like. So unfortunately, right now we don't have really staff support to help with those projects and it, it really needs to be kind of a collaborative effort. Um, so I don't know that we could do much to move those projects forward right now. Okay. All right. Well, maybe as those as the scope of work does come down on those, hopefully in the future, um, I guess I would just say maybe from the committee's perspective that as, as the scope of work goes on, if there are opportunities things that we could do that that might be a place that you know some folks in this committee or some you know subgroup could work on. Um, some discrete aspects of that. I think there, we could probably find some folks here who would be more than willing to uh, to assist on that because we have some precedent for that in the past. Um, the other one was the placemaking. Um, I don't know. Obviously, we're we're sort of running up on time here. We're getting close to eight thirty. Um, but uh, there is this thing about the CCC in increasing our capacity and other local stakeholders for place making, making projects. And I think this ties in really perfectly with what Frank was talking about in terms of you know, arts in downtown and the DCI and the role of arts. Um, and so maybe we can just sort of have this floating around to the extent in the future. I know our, our calendar is a little bit crowded for the rest of 2022, um, but maybe to the extent that we do have opportunities to um, have some more open topics for us to discuss, we could bring in some of those stakeholders and kind of have a little more conversation about that, what that could look like, what that might mean um, for us to play that role uh, or to help bring people together and to, to move the ball forward on some of those implementation projects. Any, I mean, I am I off base here? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to a, a screen again uh, and I'm out of practice because I've been out for the summer, my classes I've been teaching. So, um, if anybody thinks I'm way off base here, I'm, I'm, I've lost the plot, just let me know. Ann? Yes, um, the National Association of Counties, I'm on the Arts and Culture Commission and uh, joined the commission just at the tail end of a last year's grant project for awards for people who could then uh, be high, to pay for facilitators to come in and really work on these kinds of uh, placemaking discussions and really help to further this along. So I will dig up what information I can and share it so that it's in the general 
you know, library of people when, uh, when we're thinking about this, because um, that, and also the book that Frank shared with me about 10 years ago called Small Towns, Big Ideas, that uh, is every page is from another place about, you know, between five and 20,000 people and all the different approaches that these different communities have taken to really evaluate who they are and, and really provide concrete steps to, to strengthen themselves. And I think we'll be able to glean some good ideas from those couple hundred pages to look at. And I can share that link with anybody who's looking for that as well. Thank you, Anne. Meg? I was just gonna say, I think it's fantastic that you have, uh, you know, I, I remember the days when our hands were a bit tied and we too sort of moved ourselves forward in areas to place make as it was at the time. And it was a lot of county development. So it warms my heart. And I would say the DCI welcomes anyone's, you know, feedback and we will hearing what you're saying, Joe, I would like to, I will propose to the board. I think it might be a good idea to go back to some of our community meetings, which were largely discussion based, but we came to a place even just slightly before COVID where there was less to talk about because everything was sort of at a standstill. So every week, you know, every month or where every other month was, you know, we met at Crozet Pizza. It was a really very good community gathering. So, you know, you could certainly, we could chat together on ways because that's to me, like you said, that's what we're doing. I mean, that's what this whole project is all about. It's placemaking, right? So. Yeah. Well, thank you, Meg. I, I look forward to that. And we'll we'll look for opportunities to weave that into our, our agenda future meetings. I guess I did want to ask too, Rachel, from from just sort of a technical standpoint, is there is the plan that there's going to be a similar um calendar for 2023 in terms of CAC meetings? Is sort of is it is it going to be programmed similarly? Is that the idea? We actually haven't gotten that far yet. I think we oh. need to do um a bit of a like reflection, how did it go? Are there things we should change? Uh, welcome your feedback. If you like that um, kind of set schedule that we know a little bit in advance, I think from staff's perspective, it's really helpful mm -hmm. so we can allocate resources, um, but definitely wanna hear from you all. What do you think? Do you like it? Should we make adjustments? Um, so no decisions are made yet, but. Maybe we can, um, I'll, I'll make a note, Rachel, and maybe we can weave that in. That can be part of our conversation next meeting or okay. to the extent we have like committee business. Maybe that could be a nice like 10 or 15 minute conversation right there is just feedback on that. The only thing that I would add at this point is I only asked the question because looking at the calendar, one thing I was thinking about is reading about the comp plan, you know, the recent surveys and the options that have gone out. And one thing, you know, one of the laments I think I've heard is people saying that there hasn't been quite as much engagement or a little bit of concern about sort of the, the breadth of community engagement. And I, I was thinking like, you know, these kinds of groups, I don't, I don't know that we've had the opportunity to really dive into some of the specific conversations or the options or the alternatives that I've seen in the surveys and some of these other things. So, you know, I, I feel like we've been felt a little disconnected from the comp plan process um, here on the committee, just a little bit. I know that they're, the, the, the presentations all that are supposed to be kind of aligned up. I, I feel like we've been a little separated from it. Um, we, we, we let's maybe we'll, we'll put that on next time we can have a longer conversation and did you have another comment or yeah can? Oh, okay no problem uh we're coming down to the end of of meeting we're almost wrapping up but i did want to leave just a couple of minutes for some quick announcements and also an introduction uh we have a new member since last time we were here i believe grace um would you like to maybe introduce yourself a little bit tell us about yourself and um you know uh where you are where you're from and what brought you to the committee Hi, um, uh, it's nice to see you all here. Um, I am, uh, a, I've been a resident, resident of Crozet since um, my husband and I bought our first home here in May of 2020. Um, so we got to know Crozet initially through the pandemic and um, now um, uh, we're getting beyond that, which is great. Um, I, uh, we lived in Charlottesville for a, a year before that. And before that, I was in Richmond. I did my master's at BCU in urban planning um, and have my undergraduate degree in anthropology and worked in the nonprofit sector in a variety of ways over the, over the last several years. Um, I just started staying at home with my um, 
son in the fall. He was born in October. He's now 10 months old. Um, so that's how I'm currently spending most of my time. Um, but it's great to be um, with you all. And I'm excited to, to get more involved as we go forward. Thanks, Grace, so much. And can you just pronounce your last name for us? Reamer. Reamer. Excellent. So now we all know. Um, so that was one announcement. Another exciting announcement we mentioned at the, at the top, as um, Carolyn mentioned, this is our last uh, virtual meeting as I understand it. Um, so our next meeting will be in September in person back at the Crozet Library. Um, so it will be fun to be back in person for the first time in two and a half years. It'll be very exciting to be back uh, with everybody. Um, I guess just the very final things, any other announcements? Um, and I know we, we mentioned it briefly earlier, this exciting announcement about the, the Three Notch Trail. Um, exciting news there it certainly is and and uh i don't have any details but i think we are now ready to start marching and i sent an email to the transportation staff jessica and kevin and also to Allie hill who's been with the Charlottesville trail the uh been working on this trail literally for 10 years with a whole group of stakeholders mostly who live in the in the western county so it is it is going to be a really great step forward. One thing we all learned during COVID, which was should not have been a shock, but still was, was even without any organized sports happening at our parks, instead of 1 million visitors a year with sports, we had 2.6 million visitors in 2020 with just passive recreation. And so this has been a real eye opener for, I think, local government officials at all levels because it makes us realize what people really desire and need. And it's much more equally available across the entire citizenry than just expensive facilities for uh, you know, some, but not all. So uh, that was really great. And I think that we have a new focus on trying to facilitate getting as many people who were able and interested out into our um, park situation. It was a major crisis and still is that we didn't have enough staff to open all the lakes for the whole summer. And I know that's been a real burden on people because it's been so awfully hot. And to uh, Mint Springs has been open, as you may hopefully know, the, because we shifted all the lifeguard staff from Chris Green to, uh, to Mint Springs uh, 10 days ago. So I don't know about how long that will last. I hope it will last throughout August because there are a lot of a lot of hot folks in Crozet who need to get wet. And perhaps for another year, it, I was not able to get the discussion to happen quickly enough this year. It wasn't really feasible. I did, a citizen actually asked about having swim at your own risk possibilities for Men Springs. For, when Men Springs closed uh, or was due to staffing, that's when these requests came in and I passed it along to county staff who passed it along to legal and their insurance people to find that actually it would not be an increased liability for the county from, from their insurance, which was a big surprise to all of us. And so going forward to next year, I think this will be a more uh, open-minded approach to how we handle our swimming lakes going forward. And the major problem that we have to solve and have not solved that all yet, haven't done any of the empirical research yet, is what's going on with this algae that is closing Chris Green every year for the last five years. And so we've got to work on that whole watershed. And I've been browbeating the folks at DEQ to get out here and start testing things more because we've got to find out what the sources are that have just popped up in the last five years. So this, is, this has got to be figured out. And uh, so that's something we'll hopefully be working on and make some more progress before swim season next year. Thank you very much, Anne. Any other announcements, updates, questions, or final comments from anybody on the committee? What do I do with my... Um... Well, with that, I will read our closing statement and then we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. The CAC's next meeting is tentatively scheduled for September 14th at 7 p.m. at the Crozet Library. Opportunities for the public to access and participate in the meeting will be posted at a later date in accordance with the open meeting requirements of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act.
do we have a motion to adjourn? Thanks, Valerie. There's a second. All in favor. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a Thanks wonderful day. See you all next.